Obviously, NVIDIA is known for their GPUs. That doesn't surprise anyone. If you go to the freaking this thing is huge. NVIDIA has like 76% of Steam market share and all of that. And if you actually dig into how many GPUs are being sold, AMD is uh, selling this CPU or this GPU, that's not a CPU. RX 7700, 7600 XT. 2000 of these have been sold in the past month. It's crazy here that NVIDIA is still offering an RTX 3060. 10,000 units have been sold in the past month. It is crazy. But what if NVIDIA was also huge on the CPU side of it? This is a device designed by NVIDIA that has a CPU on board. And we can actually see it running Linux. It can run operating system on an NVIDIA device. It's wild that this thing exists. And I'm gonna kind of break the illusion, I'm gonna break the fourth wall a little bit. The CPU itself, now the rest of the chip and everything is still designed by NVIDIA, but the CPU isn't specifically designed by NVIDIA. But there's a lot of things that this can mean into the future because NVIDIA has been working with the company who designed it for a very long time. I'm guessing nowadays that NVIDIA is getting a pretty good idea of how these things tick and how could this really affect the entire CPU market. NVIDIA is absolutely no stranger to making CPUs at all. Like the Grace CPU for their Grace Hopper chips. It's a monster, it's 72 cores and it's almost as fast as AMD's fastest processor. And now this guy's ARM based, whereas AMD's is x86 based. We're gonna get into the nuances in just a little bit. Kind of crazy that Nvidia has already designed things, we just haven't seen this kind of stuff on the consumer side of the market. Now let's actually dig into the device to kind of understand it. So what is this this little this little doodad little gadget guy? Nvidia Jetson, and Jetson is a play on his name, Jensen. It's called the Orin. Nano Super. Orins have actually already been out in the past. Like this isn't necessarily a new thing. This is an upgrade to a older processor. If we dig into it too, you can actually just buy them straight up right now. They're $250 for this development kit. Basically you can just run small AI tasks at low power and just give you a lot of versatility without having like a big bulky computer or having to use a really low power device like a stinking Raspberry Pi that's really bad at what it does for AI and all that. But now we can go ahead and scroll down to the specs, probably what we're most interested in. What is the CPU on board? It is a six core CPU based on ARM, kind of like Nvidia's other CPUs they've made. This Cortex A78AE it has eight gigabytes of RAM and it actually has this GPU on board that has 1024 CUDA cores and 32 tensor cores. The first thing I wanna address here is ARM. And these x86 processors basically run Windows nowadays. So why the heck does N Nvidia have to use ARM? Well, this actually comes back to a really long story, <laughs> or like, I guess not long story, but a very long history. Intel designed the x86 architecture that we all basically use on our Windows PCs. x86 architecture is super old and Intel wanted to keep it for themselves. Intel's own partners were putting pressure on them. They said, hey, we don't want you to have a monopoly on CPU architecture. What we're gonna make you do, license out the architecture to another company as well. That is the only reason to this day that AMD can still use the x86 architecture. And that's the reason why Nvidia has to use ARM-based CPUs. They just can't use x86 architecture ones. If you don't know what ARM architecture is, you'll find a lot of ARM processors in your mobile devices like phones and tablets and even some laptops, especially from Apple. They've done a lot of ARM processors as of lately. It's still a very popular architecture. It's just x86 is what we use on Windows. That's one of the problems with ARM is when you design applications for a certain architecture, it's not universal. Like things have to be designed for x86 or they have to be designed for ARM. And that's one of the big transitions that Apple went through. Everything had to be redesigned on Mac OS to run on those ARM processors. Apple had a really good situation where those, those chips, because they're so power efficient and so powerful too, a lot of companies were like, hey, we're just, it's a closed ecosystem. It was a pretty easy, smooth transition. Windows, even though Windows has been designed with x86 architecture for so long now, actually Windows has been trying to make a transition to also work well on ARM processors too. And we've seen that with their Snapdragon chips on their laptops. So earlier this year in 2024, Microsoft and Qualcomm, they kind of did like a big partnership. They really pushed Windows to support more ARM-based applications, even with a translation layer. So if you're 
application was x86 based, it would be able to translate it in real time in order to work on ARM based processors. Problem with Windows on ARM situation is a lot of applications still don't work on it. One of the big things about Windows is how versatile the operating system is. So you can hate Windows all you want, and I don't blame you. Windows has a lot of problems, but you have to respect it that it can do so much. ARM has an issue is like, no matter how good the support is on Windows, Windows can't force these companies to remake their applications to run on ARM for Windows. Gaming especially doesn't really work on ARM processors at all, and I don't really see a plan for it to in the future unless some way we can hook up GPUs directly to ARM processors. Wink, wink, NVIDIA. What's really weird about this whole situation is even though Microsoft has put so much work into it, we haven't seen a ton of adoption of their Qualcomm Snapdragon Windows based laptops, all that kind of stuff. Only 720,000 Qualcomm Snapdragon X laptops have been sold since launch. These came out in the summer of this year. That's under 0.8% of the total number of PCs shipped in quarter three, or less than one out of every 125 devices. If NVIDIA designs CPU, use and they run on ARM. NVIDIA is such a big company. And if they can design a CPU that is competitive enough to AMD and Intel, then we could see a huge difference. Obviously, Microsoft is invested in making Windows on ARM work. That could be an entry point for NVIDIA to actually make CPUs. Some things are lining up. Let's actually talk about the CPU architecture itself on this little here device. And it's based on Cortex. Now, what is Cortex? Uh, if we just look on the Wikipedia page here, ARM Cortex-A is actually a processor licensed by ARM themselves. Now, that's pretty interesting. ARM doesn't typically make their CPUs. You see that we even talked about Qualcomm. Qualcomm makes Snapdragon processors, and that's still ARM based. They license out the architecture from ARM themselves. We see Samsung, I think Texas Instruments as well, and even, uh, what's that one company? Ah, oh, shit. Damn, I can't remember what they're called. I'm gonna throw it on the screen. Nvidia actually tried to buy ARM, and the only reason they couldn't was because that was getting to monopolistic behavior at that point. So that got shut down by the government. So how interested is Nvidia in designing CPUs? Let's dig really quick here into the processor itself here and maybe some more experience of how long in Nvidia has been in the game here. So obviously it's a six core ARM Cortex processor. The GPU in it is based off of Ampere architecture with 1024 CUDA cores and 32 tensor cores. Now I think it's interesting to take a look at here. Here's the RTX 3050. Now this guy is based off of Ampere architecture from 2020, so it has 2560 CUDA cores on it. And then in terms of tensor cores, the RTX 3050 has 80 tensor cores. The 3050 isn't really a fast GPU either, like you just see how much it, comparing to GPUs like the 1070 Ti. Uh, which was actually faster than it. <laughs> yeah, the 3050 wasn't even that fast. So it's not like this GPU is gonna be super fast either. As if we actually look here, the Nvidia has designed chips in the past before the freaking Nintendo Switch. And even back then, we look on the Nintendo Switch Wikipedia page, this guy, was using an ARM Cortex processor. So way back in 2017, NVIDIA was already working with ARM. Obviously the Switch has an operating system. It functions, it plays games. NVIDIA's newer chips can also run things like Linux. You see where I'm going here? It's like NVIDIA has a good bit of experience making this stuff work, even on consumer side, whereas data center stuff, might they probably have it working pretty well too. And this is where it gets really goofy, is there's been some leaks about the Nintendo Switch 2, but I think this is the same processor that's being sold right now. Like, let's just look at the leak itself or the rumor. Let me know if there's more concrete information out here. I was trying to find if there was more, uh, like, recent leaks about it. For the Nintendo Switch 2, NVIDIA is said to utilize a customized variant of NVIDIA Jetson or an SoC for automotive applications. And if we look here, it's supposed to boast 12 Cortex A78AE cores with DDR5 memory along with an Ampere GPU architecture. Now, a lot of those names are probably sounding pretty familiar because if we go back to the spec page, well, what does it have on it? A78AE Cortex architecture. Now, it said 12 core there. I don't know. 
maybe those that's an older leak i'm not sure that this version here is actually just some of the it's like a cut down version of the 12 core one for the nintendo switch it's possible that some of the cores just don't work on the nintendo switch too now they're just selling them as developer developer kits at this point in time and disabling some of those cores that don't work and this is also based on the ampere architecture and I think this is honestly the exact same chip that's going to be in the Nintendo Switch 2, maybe just with the power targets tweaked a little bit. But obviously, NVIDIA has worked with companies that make operating systems, that make consumer devices, and even runs games like the Nintendo Switch. NVIDIA really could be making CPUs at the moment. The only thing that they're going to have a hurdle of, games don't really, on Windows, they don't run on ARM that well. And other operating systems have shown that can work. There's actually a huge push right now on Mac OS to get games ported to run native on the new ARM processors on the systems. But that will be the biggest hurdle is will the software be supporting NVIDIA ARM CPUs? But there's another side of it that I think is even more interesting. And maybe this would be a very long term thing. What if NVIDIA made a system that doesn't even need a CPU? They wouldn't have to worry about the compatibility things if you don't even need the goddamn CPU in the first place. And this is where you kind of have to hear me out here. GPUs are very fast. And if you know anything about, I don't know, like rendering out videos on your computer or doing 3D rendering, so many tasks nowadays are honestly so focused on the GPU. Say in my computer right now, I have an i7-13700K in here. I'm kind of testing it right now. I'm seeing if it's gonna break or not. I haven't really had problems yet. Only has actually 16 cores on it. You know, compared to an RTX 3050, a low end graphics card has over 2,500 cores. Now, obviously if you take, if you were to take a core out of the 13700K and take a core out of the 3050, the individual cores on the CPU are gonna be quite a bit faster than the GPU. If they were doing the same task, I don't know if that's possible, but. Because the problem with CPUs at the moment and the reason why you know, they're not always that fast is because so many applications are single threaded. That's the reason CPUs are built the way that they are but it means that CPUs can only run as fast as the cores that are on them. You can't just give it a ton more cores and expect it to work properly. GPUs are designed to run tons of different small tasks at the same time in parallel, and you can just keep expanding how many cores are available on the GPU to get more power. We scroll down here and we actually go to the RTX 4090 instead. This guy has 16,000 CUDA cores. It's a massive die where GPUs can genuinely just do more processing and they have more room to scale up. CPUs don't progress at the same rate as GPUs do and there might actually end up being a point in time where CPUs just can't really advance at a rate that's even reasonable. But GPUs are gonna be able to keep going. Could Nvidia make a system that doesn't require a CPU? There's a reason we all have CPUs. CPUs are necessary to make the operating system function, all the IO to talk to each other, make it tells, it tells everything what to do. That's what the CPU does. Or maybe could, we could even end up in a situation where there's just a few cores of a CPU or what would have been a CPU on the GPU. And that manages, you know, just a few things and manages the operating system and stuff. But most of the work is then parallelized by the GPU that can expand out further and actually tackle more tasks and is overall faster than what a CPU could ever dream of being. And I think this reality is growing closer and closer this day, John Carmack, he actually has posted on Twitter, I still think today's GPUs should be able to operate without host CPUs if they have a private link. Chains of accelerators are a legitimate use, but it would be fun if GPUs made their own video signal with diagnostic information when you apply power outside of a host program. Very knowledgeable guy and a lot of this stuff is like, it goes over my head. Like I'm not a freaking uh, architectural uh, CPU silicon engineer or something like that. I don't know what the hell I'm really, really talking about. I think there is a, a decent idea here is as long as the GPU knows what it's doing and the GPUs can just kind of work together. He's talking about if you plug in a bunch of GPUs with each other, the GPU can just run the application on its own. This wouldn't mean that you have an operating system that you can click through and do a bunch of stuff with, but this would be more that the GPU has a task and knows how to do the task and it just does the work. And to be honest, that's a reality that 
sounds reasonable. And I think this is actually an area where if Nvidia could bring that to the table, it has a lot better processing power and it could revolutionize how central processing units actually end up working. That would be a thing that developers from different programs, Microsoft, Windows, and everything, I think that a lot of companies would want to support and get on board with this. It's kind of like how Apple Silicon is on Mac side. A bunch of companies just started developing for it because it was just that much better. And if Nvidia were to be able to eliminate CPUs in the future, let me know if this is even possible. I, I don't know. Computing would maybe have to change like fundamentally cpus are honestly looking like they they do have a peak even if at the moment if nvidia were to make their own arm cpus with their engineering their technical know-how it wouldn't surprise me if they could actually still be quite competitive even desktop side compared to intel and amd and microsoft investing so much into arm at the moment and if Nvidia jumps on board, I think games would even probably start working on ARM as well. I think them having that device that can literally run Linux on it that doesn't involve Intel or AMD or an Nvidia graphics card plugged into a PCIe slot, it's pretty interesting that this exists. Do you think they're actually going to design CPUs? Do they have a shot? It'd be kind of like how Intel jumped into the GPU space and honestly their latest battle image GPU the b580 is pretty damn good actually I'll link it I'll link it right here I'll put it on a little card right here let me know is this possible that's been it for me I'm gonna see you guys in the next video and peace